here I'm going to show you three ways to make drop down lists or menus in Excel and we're going to go from simple to more advanced yet much more robust and end up with a nice little thing like this where we can select a part from a drop down menu and on our data worksheet when we add a new part it will automatically be added here to our list and when we select an item we'll have a little bit of data fill into the form that's a little extra for the tutorial. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, let's start off with the first example, which is going to be the easiest and most basic way to add a simple drop-down menu or list to a cell in Excel. And don't be intimidated by what you see here. These are just cells. Go to the View tab and check Grid Lines, and you will see it's a regular Excel worksheet. I've just changed the background color here, added a border around it, made this cell white, and added a button right here. But you can add a drop-down menu to any cell. I just wanted to make it look a little bit nicer. So let us make it look nicer again. Here we go, no grid lines. And now we're going to add a drop down menu here. Now, what you do for this, and this isn't necessarily obvious when you're using Excel, but what you want to do is data validation. So select the cell and then go to the data tab and go over here. It's a little button right here data validation. Click that and you're going to get this window. Or how I'm going to use it here, I find it much easier, is the keyboard shortcut. Alt D L. It's really easy and it opens up the window. So select the desired cell and then Alt D L and now go to the settings tab and here under allow you have lots of options and most of these options are just regular input. So if the user inputs a number or text or something like that, but we want list. So go down to list and make sure that you have in cell drop down checked and go to source and type what you want. So here's our question form. Are you a lizard? Well, maybe. So how about yes? No. Maybe. It is as easy as this. No quotation marks, no equal sign. Once again, something that isn't terrifically obvious because you're used to inputting formulas in cells where you have both of those things. But no quotes, no equal sign just commas between the options in the list. Then hit OK. And we have our drop down menu. Yes, no, and maybe. Oops, there we go. It is as easy as that. So you select the cell, Alt D L, under allow, go to list. And then source, type it in, no quotes, no equal sign, comma separating each option. Now, this is the easy way to do it, but the problem is that when you want to add or remove an item, you have to come back to this window each time. So that's not really good for when you want to make changes in the future. So let's go to the next example. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to use a list as the source for our menu over here. Now, right now, this is just a regular data. It's not a table, it's nothing special. And once again, this is just a regular worksheet with grid lines turned off. So what we're gonna do here is same thing, Alt DL, go down to list, in source, this time, click the little up arrow, and we are going to select the range that contains the options that we want. And each one of these options is in its own cell. It's not just one cell where I've hit enter within the cell. So each option in its own cell, select the range, hit enter. We see the range reference here, hit OK. And now we have another drop down menu. So far, we've made it easier to update our menu. We can change the options here. What is color? Let's add another question mark. How about exclamation point? Now we can go to our menu and right there. Perfect. But if we go down here to add an option, another option, it will not update this list. So what we're going to do right now is make it so that this will update when you add an item to the table. Let us remove this and let's just copy this. Go over here to column L, change this to table. 
that doesn't make it a table. I just want to make it clear we're going to put a table here. So select it in here. Go to Insert Table. If you have a header, check my table has headers. If you have it also selected, which I do here, hit OK. You'll see the formatting change. Don't worry. Towards the end of the tutorial, I will show you how to remove all of this formatting if you don't like it. But now we have a table here. And if you want to just very easily reference the data in this table on the same worksheet, then that's what we're going to do right now. I will show you a more advanced and robust way to do that in a moment, but let's keep it simple for now. So let's go back over here. Same thing, Alt DL, go to our source, delete this, hit the up arrow, and select here. Okay, so it looks like a regular range. We have dollar signs in here, which means that they should be absolute references, which means that it's not going to update if I add a value to the table, right? Well, let us see. Okay, we have our options. I taste color. That guy's having a good time. And now let us add red. Notice when you add a value to the end of a table, it will automatically extend that table. Now let's see if we have it in our drop-down menu. Bam, there we go, red. So the only thing we did between this one and this one is we set this one to a table, an actual table in Excel. We made the references the exact same way, but now we have the benefit of our drop-down menu automatically updating. And this is maybe the number one reason why using tables like this in Excel is amazing. But now let's move on to the third example, the most robust example, the one that you should use probably in every instance where you want to drop down menu or a list if it's not just going to be super, super simple. So here is our part selection little mini form, and I have cleared it, so there's nothing in here right now. And our data for this guy is going to come from another tab. This could be our raw data tab or worksheet where you have all the data that you don't want to be directly displayed to the user. So you don't need any formatting. You can have whatever you want over here. And then we're going to reference it from the tabs that the user sees. So this worksheet right here. So the first thing that we want to do here is to update this data to become a table. So select anywhere in here or all of the data. Go to insert, table, or you can see the keyboard shortcut right there, control T. If it has headers, check my table has headers, okay. Now we have our table format. Lovely, lovely. Don't worry about this format. If you hate this formatting, a lot of people do. I'll show you how to change it and remove it so it looks like a normal range at the end of the tutorial. What we want to do right now to make our life easier is go ahead and give this table a name. This is our table on our raw data worksheet. We're going to reference it a lot. So let's give it a useful name. Click anywhere here in the table, go to table design. In previous versions of Excel, you might have a few tabs up here. Just choose the one that allows you to change the table name. So I'm going to go up here and let's make it something that is descriptive. This table is going to hold our parts. So we're going to call it parts. And what is it? It is a table. So now hit enter and we have renamed this table. Now, if you go to the formulas tab and the name manager, you're going to see both of our tables. This is the first one that we made with the default name. And here is our new one where we have renamed it. So it doesn't have table one, two, or three. It's something descriptive, so we can easily reference it. And now what we want to do is go ahead and name these ranges. Now you could select the entire range like that, and if you have a giant list, you can hover your mouse pointer over the top and you'll get a little black arrow pointing down. Click it once, it includes the header. Click it twice, we take the header out, just like that. But once you have your range, go ahead and let us go to formulas and define name. You could do the name up here, but I don't like doing that. So define name and let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it parts available and make sure it's the correct reference. This will be the way that you reference ranges in tables. So parts, table, available parts, okay. And let's go down here and name this one as well. We aren't gonna actually use this, but we'll give it a name. Parts, Q-T-Y. So now we have a couple different named ranges. Parts available right there and parts quantity right there. We can check out everything if we click the name manager 
And yes, that's a little bit of additional work, okay? But it doesn't take that long once you know what you're doing. So we have everything set up now, and let's go to the form table, Alt D L. Let's go to allow list, and we want to type in here the name of the column that we'd like to put right here. We want to put the part numbers, the parts available. But there's a really cool little trick right here. If you don't remember the name, just hit F3 on the keyboard once you've clicked in source, and you'll get all of the available names in the workbook that you can use. So we want parts available. Click that, hit OK, and it fills it in for us there. That way you don't have to worry about misspelling it. So now we have everything. Looks good. Hit OK. And we have, we have our list. Look how lovely it is. And I've centered the values in the middle of the cell, so it looks a little bit nicer. And now let's go look at the bottom option right here, ASC-9. Let's go over here, and we're going to go ahead and add an option for ASC-10. And let's say we have 23 of them in stock. All right, let's go back over here. And there we go, ASC-10. How cool is that? Requires a little bit of extra effort, right? But it is so nice. And you could create a form that would allow you to enter the part number on the raw data worksheet so that the end user never had to go over here and see any of this. That's probably the best way to do that. But now, to finish off this little tiny form, let's go ahead and make a little V lookup. So V lookup, I want to look up this. And I want to look it up in, here we can just start typing. I want to get it from our parts table. And the column I want to return it from is 2, range lookup, false for exact match. And there we go, 23 ASC-10. Let's see if it's right. And it's right. So now we can select any part and see the quantity. And if the user didn't enter anything up here, we'll get a little error. So let us surround this guy with if error. And go over here, just make it blank. There we go. So now it's nice, it's neat, and it returns a value. And that's how you can use data validation to create a really nice list. And this puts you on your way to creating a really nice input form in Excel. And what I'm going to do right now is quickly show you how to remove this formatting. So let's say it's not on a raw data worksheet and you want this to be removed, or it is, but you still want it removed. Click in here in the table, go to Table Design, and you can go over here to Table Styles. Click the drop down and go to the upper left option. And most of it is gone now. You see a little bit in the bottom right, and you see the drop down arrows. But we can remove the arrows. So click in the table, go to Table Design, and uncheck Filter Button. And there we go. Something that looks almost exactly like just a regular boring old range, but it is, in fact, still our table. So ASC-11, and let's say there are 11 there. You can see the little tiny arrow move down. Our table has expanded. That's what it means. So we go over here, and we now have ASC-11. Perfect. And that's three different ways to make a lovely drop down list or menu in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.